Hey, Matt Simpkins, Franconia Township. I work as a science teacher in a neighboring school district, and next Monday, I will be in a classroom with unmasked teenagers, and I could not be more excited about that. You see, the state and national teachers unions and media want you to believe that most teachers want to wear a mask, and that most teachers want your kids to wear masks, but that could not be further from the truth. How do I know this? Because the school where I work made masks optional for the last week of school last year, and over 90% of teachers showed up the next day without them. And by the second day of optional masks, almost all the kids weren't wearing masks. We had prom in the gym with optional masks. Do you guys remember seeing headlines of hospitals overwhelmed in a wave of sick kids last June? Neither do I. Here's the thing. The politicians and the health experts do not want schools to open normally, because when they do, and when we're fine, people might start asking questions about whether any of the mitigations, and if all the dystopian measures we subjected our children to were necessary at all. Measures like school opening contingent on community transmission rates or enough space to ensure six feet of social distancing or canceling sports or confining children to plexiglass cubicles or isolating children at lunchtime or obsessive surface cleaning. Every single CDC or state or county guideline that I just listed has been studied in the last 18 months and the real world impact, the real world data has demonstrated no statistically significant impact on schools and transmission. And yes, I have the citations to back each of those claims. I'm a science teacher. I'm a nerd. Give me forgive me. I would like to pause and thank the South Towerton School Board for adopting as few of these recommendations as possible last year. You did not cave to pressure to keep schools closed, but rejected the expert guidance and did what you know to be best for our community and for our kids in Souterton. Souterton School District has a track record of doing what is best for students' holistic well-being, even if it means shirking the recommendations of the experts, which brings us to mass. I can also provide plenty of studies to show how ridiculous it is to assert that putting a piece of fabric against a child's face all day is supposed to keep them or anyone else safe from an airborne respiratory virus spread primarily via aerosolized particles. But as a teacher, I want to focus on the impact that masks have in the real classroom. I lived this last year. I wish I could transport you to see the beautiful moment every day last year where I announced our 10 minute mask break. Muffled voices and smothered faces and tired eyes transformed into conversation, laughter, discussion, and joy. Students enthusiastically ripped the masks from their faces, and I could see visible sighs of relief. Anyone who tells you that masks are no big deal or have no negative effects on children's psychology or the learning process are either uninformed, deluded, or dishonest. My students told me those 10 minutes were the highlight of every day. It has been said that the eyes are the window to the soul, and I would contend that the face is the window to the heart and to the mind. When I'm trying to teach my students a new skill, their face tells me whether their mind is engaging or not. When I can see a student's face, I get a sense of how their day is going and if they need a little extra love or encouragement. When you take away faces, you cripple a teacher's ability to fully engage the students' hearts and minds. Please vote to keep masks optional, and let's get back to loving and teaching our kids the way we know is best, face to face. Thank you. God bless.